here. My name is Katie Chapman. Welcome back to another episode of Cooks in Town. Today's guest we have Rama K. Ramaswamy. All right, and today I'm really excited because we're going to be doing something that we have yet to do on these shows, and we're going to do Indian food. Uh, Rama, tell me a little bit where you are from and what gives you, you know, so much wisdom about Indian food. I like I like that wisdom. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, so I'm actually this is interesting for me because um, this is actually Indianizing regular food. So I'm actually going to be working with regular American food, Perfect. and then I'm going to be adding Indian flavoring to it. So um, I've lived internationally, and I'm uh, from a little bit of everywhere. Um, originally from India, so I was born there, um, and my parents and I have lived all over and moved all over. Yeah. And I find that Indian people, wherever they go, they like to flavor their food. Yeah. They just get tired of eating like the same foods um, wherever they are. So yeah. they like to have their ginger and their turmeric and their, you know chilies and yeah so but um, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do a, a mix today so, so not too complicated pretty fast yeah. and it's things that you know myself who's not familiar with Indian cooking um, but there's some items in there that I right. am familiar with and it's just taking a few simple spices and herbs and just kind of throwing it together and like you said we've now right. Indianized it and right. you, you can give any food a, a whole different flavor right so so, okay, so let's Perfect. get kind of started. I'm so excited because I see all these colorful I and know. fun this seeds. Is my, and this is my uh, Indian spice box. And can you get those? Yes. So any Indian store will have this. Okay. Um, they're pretty readily available. They have little cups that fit inside them, and you can put your, your spices. Great. And this is uh, this is mustard seed. I have some of that. I have some cumin. Yep. Which I was telling Katie before that it has its uh, origins um from the Mediterranean and Egyptian regions. Okay. And it, it grows all over from the Mediterranean to India. And I actually tasted just one right. single seed of that, and it's so floral and fresh. I, I'm excited to use it. And, uh, and then I have this thing called, um, this is called Urad, U-R-A-D, and it's a type of lentil. And um, it's, it's a little, a little um, it comes out black, but then they split it oh. and polish it, and it, it's white inside. Oh, neat. Okay. And so we use a variety of lentils in our foods, so that's one. Um, and then this is coriander, which right. also has a very interesting flavor. And then I have some uh, yeah, chilies, the little round chilies. Are those spice-wise? Are those super spicy? They're not the super spicy. They're okay. sort of um, mid-grade. They're not like habanero peppers. Okay. They're not. And they're also dry chilies, so they they tend to be a little bit milder. Yeah. But I, I like these compared to the long ones. I don't know why. I think I just like the round shape. They're cute. But they're the same thing. <laughs> yeah. um, and then I have cardamom here. So this is cardamom. Oh, interesting. Okay. And this has a very um, very sweet and rich aroma. And if you want to take one, and you can actually um, crush it, and yeah. you can you can actually um, um, hold hold up your fingers and. You can actually oh, see the aroma, it. yeah, and it's it's almost like a mix of vanilla and a little um, almost gingery. Mm -hmm. It has yeah, that kind like of lemon gingery, right. almost so, like lemongrass. Right, and right. I actually use this. Um, uh, this is used um, widely in Asia, Southeast Asia, um, China. Yeah, and people can actually throw this into your cake mix. You can grind oh. it up and put it in. It gives your it gives your vanilla essence a little kick. Oh, that's so, such a and, good idea. Um, the Indonesians use a lot of cardamom. They have a um, after Ramadan. They have a um, they make a spice cake. And they put cloves and cardamom in yeah. that, and that spice cake, and it's 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 amazingly good. How so. interesting! And you brought some bags. Of I did items just to give. Well, this one looks like it might have punctured a little uh -oh. bit, but it's right there. So just okay, be no problem. <laughs> so yeah, this is. Um, so I brought some bags of spices just to show people what it looks like at the Indian store um, when you go to buy these things. Um, and you can also get a ground variety of these. Um, they are pre-ground and pre-powdered for you, but I like to use the fresh ones because they last longer, they have a richer flavor, and if you don't cook Indian every day, you can actually keep these for a while, and they're, they're good for quite yeah. a long time. I was going to ask yeah. you, like, when it comes to using whole, right. you know, as opposed to pre-ground, right. You definitely would suggest going. I, I prefer it yeah. um, just because the um, shelf life, right? The shelf life, and also th there's no added preservatives mm -hmm. in it Good because point. a lot of like you know your taco seasonings and mixes that you, yeah. you buy, you can when you read the labels. Um, I have I have a child with allergies, and my yep. husband has some allergies as well, so I'm very careful about the allergy issue. But um, you read the labeling, and it has citric acid, ascorbic, it has xanthan gum, it has sodium benzo something or the other. 
you know, all kinds of things right. that are in there, and you wonder, like, what is this stuff that I'm eating along with the spice mix that I'm putting in? And how much of it is actually that exactly. spi the spices? Exactly, exactly. And then there are other um, spice brands, uh, companies that make, um, uh, you know, pure ground spices with nothing else, no added okay. flavorings. But you notice that if you have this on your shelf in your, in your um, kitchen for, um, you know, three, four months, you, you start losing that that's it, scent yeah, and flavor. it dies off a little bit. Right. So if you have the, the whole ones, then it's you can grind them as you use and as you need, so, and then use it. Perfect, right, and it only so, takes a couple seconds, which we're going right. to do now. Right. So you have, I love it, you have. Yes, I have, I have my dedicated coffee grinder that I brought <laughs> in. Uh, it's a, it's a, I don't use it for coffee, I only use it for Indian spices. And I like to, I like to, you can do different levels of grinding, just like coffee beans. Okay. You can do a rough grind, a very fine grind, mm -hmm. just depending on what your family prefers. Okay. And um, how much flavor you want to release. So the more finely ground, it releases all the flavor. Okay. Good and then it also is very smooth when it goes into your food when you mix it in. You don't, you don't, you know, notice the little pieces that it doesn't get stuck in your teeth and right. stuff. So just for convenience um, and for texture in the mouth. Just keep that in mind when, right, when what you're certain dishes it. are doing. So today right. we're doing an Indianized soup. Right. Um, so for that, what would we want to do? Like something more. So I'm, I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna end up fine grinding it today. Right. Um, and um, just starting starting from there, but yeah. of course you can do um, whichever you want. You can also use a mortar and pestle. Oh, that's true. And yeah. you can you can um, bust up the spices <laughs> just a little bit when you've had a bad day. Yeah, you know, to <laughs> yeah. take it out on your mortar and pestle. Exactly. So it's it's cooking can be fun in so many ways. <laughs> so what so, are we gonna use today for? So spices? I'm gonna I'm gonna start with um, I'm gonna put a little bit. We have um, olive oil. Yep. And I, I usually only use olive oil, and I use um, extra light olive oil usually. Okay. Um, because the flavor is less rich, and then it doesn't um, uh, contrast, or um, how do I say it? It doesn't interfere right, doesn't with, the show with exactly with the other flavors that are going on. Yeah. But Indian food is very forgiving, um, is, and Indianizing food is very forgiving as well. It absorbs yeah. a lot of the, the other flavors. Like you can use basil, yeah. you can use a lot of Italian um, uh, flavorings with Indian food. Mm -hmm. It's very complementary. Oh, good. Oh, so we, I'm going to put also a, good to know. I'm loving this. I'm going to okay. put a little bit of olive oil in the pan. Okay. So what we're gonna do now is we're over on the stove. We've got our pan at like a medium heat. Okay. Does that work? It does. So maybe um like a, a how much is this? Let's see. Um, I brought my measuring spoons. Um, okay. So this is about a, a one tablespoon. Okay. So it only requires a little bit of of, of oil. So um, and again, it's the extra light. Um, olive oil that I like to use. Perfect. Um, I find that olive oil also is, is good for people with allergies. It, it's the least allergenic of the oils. Oh, well, that's what I read. I'm not sure about that. No, that kind of makes sense. That's what know. I hear. So there's that. Okay, and then great. we're going to wait for that oil to heat up a bit. Sure. And in the meantime, I'm going to come over to my little grinder here and I'm going to uh, grind a few things. So. And um, it's so funny, when I first learned to cook, I never measured anything. <laughs> and my, my, I learned to cook from my mother-in-law, and she would like put stuff in her hand, and she'd eyeball it, and she'd throw it in, and I'd be yeah. like, stop! And I'd run over there with a measuring spoon, and I'd scoop it out of her hand just to like get a level, or <laughs> see what she's doing. But now I don't do that anymore. Right, so yeah, yeah. I'm, on, I'm like, I have the same problem. <laughs> so I'm going to use um, a little bit, and you can adjust these. You can try different levels and you can adjust them and, and see, what, see works what works for you, for you, what you enjoy the most. Exactly. So I have this cardamom pot and I'm just going to shake out just a little bit because I don't usually put cardamom in this recipe. So what but comes out of that little pot? They're like little seeds. Can you see oh, that? Yeah. These are the cardamom seeds. They're, okay. That's you know, like little pods. And just little two. Right. There. Exactly. And I'm going to crack a chili, chili pepper and put a little bit of chili in my hand. So that should do it. That gives you a little bit of spice. Yeah. Not too bad. Um, a little bit of coriander, and I can I can smell that oil heating up. Okay. I I'm love turn the, the air. That's okay. I, I love the smell of olive oil. It smells so good when it heats up. It's gonna turn the flame down a little bit. So a little bit of this. This is um, your white um, oras dal, which is yeah. there. I'm gonna put that in. So I have other stuff in here. I have uh, fenugreek seed, which we're not gonna use today. Yeah. And um, so I'm gonna leave it there, and then I'm gonna take the mustard seeds. And I'm going to, you might be handy with that lid. Yep. So ready? So you're gonna cover it oh. as soon as I put them in because oh. they will splatter. Okay. Okay, ready? All right. All right. And you can. <laughs> oh, wow, it's like popcorn. Yes, and you have to be careful. You gotta cover it because it will come out and hit you in the, in the yeah, face. Yeah, get you right in the, the eye, yeah. Yes, absolutely. Oh, so wow, when, when the popping stops, you wanna turn down the heat a little. Okay. And take the cover off. Okay. And then, I think we're good. Yeah, up, and then you oh. can actually, um, I'm gonna put this in here and I'm gonna grind it. Okay. And 
We're going for a fine grind. Yes. Right? <laughs> and so the interesting, um, I don't know if you can hear me, but the interesting thing about Indian cooking is many people don't realize that you actually have to activate the ingredients. So it's not, you know, when you, you buy it, like, from a shaker at the store, you can't just um, put, like, curry powder on top of your food. It, it, the taste is very different. So, and I'm going to show you what that's going to taste like today. So, let's see if I can get this to open up. So I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you a little bit, Katie, just yeah. to taste. You're going to be my guinea pig, so give me your hand. Yep. And I'm going to, so taste a little bit of that. And then I'm going to um, just dry roast it a little bit. Do we have a little spatula? Yeah. Oh, perfect. Straight down well, there. Oh, perfect. Yep. Yeah. Oh, wow. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just so sort of saute it a little bit like this just to get it mixed evenly with the oil so yep. that it blends in so there's nothing dry. You can even do a dry roast with these spices. You don't actually have to put the oil in. Okay. So for people who'd rather like, oh. not use any oil at all, just throw it on a light. Just throw plate. it on a light, um, like pan, and yeah. heat it until it's a little bit brown. You know, you have to be careful just not to burn it. it. Exactly. Slightly. Exactly. So now you're ready, and you can actually put in the onions. Okay. Awesome. And I'm going to take a little bit of this out just to keep it on the side, so you can taste this, and you can see the difference. Right. In the, oh, the, in the flavor. Hit the heat a little bit. Okay. Right. So you can so throw, throw the, these in. Throw the onions in there. Okay, and what about the tomatoes? And you can you can um, wait for the onions to just, just sweat a little bit. Yeah, and then you can. So this is now with. Make sure it's it's not hot. Yeah. So, and then try that. You'll see if you can tell a taste difference. And it's almost immediate. It's a lot more roasty, like. Right. Yeah, smoky. It's like a little bit more mature and developed. Yeah. Oh, that's really good. So. Um, so easy. It is. Okay, so we're just gonna let the onions sweat down okay. a little bit. A little bit. Okay. You don't want to you don't want to um, uh, let it sit here for too long. Mm -hmm. So you want to just keep an eye on it and keep um, tossing it about because you don't want your spices to actually burn. No, and they all, that will happen quickly, right? It it does. It can happen quickly. You have yeah. to you have to keep a little bit of an eye on it. Okay. So you do that. Oh, it and smells so good in your eyes. <laughs> and then you can um, throw in the tomatoes. Okay. So we just got a couple. Diced tomatoes here. Regular one, any tomatoes. Right. One small diced onion. And you can use Vidalia or yellow onions. It doesn't matter. Whatever okay. you like is fine. Perfect. And um, you can actually, I have a little bit of spinach. Yep. Just to thicken it because the soup is actually going to be transformed into a kind of stew. So you can okay. actually put that in there too if you want. Excellent. But give it a little bit more cooking time. Yep. And I have some ginger here. We can put that in. I'm give that to sure. you. Sure. Oh, there you go. I love ginger. It's so good. And you can add, um, if you like garlic, you can add garlic. Oh, yeah. I have a little bit of salt. This is my little turmeric bottle, and I'm going to show you how to use the turmeric at the, at the end. And that's going to, like, change the color. It is going to change it? the color. You have to be careful with turmeric, because when turmeric gets on your white clothes, it will never come off. Oh, really? You can try bleaching it, but I have never been able to take turmeric off at my clothes, like, ever. So just be careful with the, <laughs> with the turmeric. <laughs> Oh, and then you know what else you had? Just while well, this is kind right. of getting the heat on to yeah. it, what is that root right there? Right, so this is um, actually your fresh turmeric. And this is from Whole Foods. Um, they have it. You can you can see that it's... So that um, is the fresh That's the of fresh, this. right. And and you can, you know, you can um, you can use either. Um, most, most of the time, um, you can smell your turmeric, and it has a very rich aroma. Right. And if it... It, it should smell like that. So it should smell, it has a particular scent. And if it's a little off, then you know that your turmeric isn't fresh. Okay. And a lot of people believe in using fresh turmeric. So if you don't find this and you, you know, it's kind of a pain to chop it up, yeah. um, you can use that. This will also stain your fingers. Oh, will it? It will. So you, you can, you know, you need, to, you need to understand that your fingers will be yellow for yeah. <laughs> several days after chopping this. Oh, wow. So yeah, that's great. I've never, I was, Curious to what that was, and yeah. it's so interesting to see it in two different right. types different of, forms. Yeah, exactly. And I have a little salt here. You can add a little salt if you feel like you need a little bit more. Okay. Not. We are using a canned soup though today, which we those are. typically have quite a bit of salt in them. I do. So we'll add that first, and then sure. do a taste and yep. see if we need to add any more. And um, you can actually. Um, I think that I think that should be. 
it's not the tomatoes haven't completely crushed down right and the onions are maybe halfway cooked and so is the spinach and you can actually go ahead and add the soup sure thing yeah because um, we still want it. a little bit of texture right. from the vegetables right. And so, what are we using today? We're using a lentil soup? So I'm just using a basic um, lentil soup. Um, and I like this particular one because it has a very mild and even flavor. And it, it doesn't have a lot of garlic and other things already added, vinegars. It's pretty, um, it's yeah, pretty, pretty straightforward, you know, lentil soup. And Indians use a lot of lentils. We use all kinds of different lentils in our cooking anyway. Right. So it sort of very naturally lends itself into making an Indian stew. Oh, and what a better time of year to have so. this recipe because it is keep cold you warm. out there. Okay. So I don't know if you know this, but cumin has a very rich, rich history. And I was just telling Katie that it's related to the parsley plant. And it, um, like I said earlier, it grows from anywhere in the Mediterranean down to India. It's been in use for about 4,000 years. That's amazing. And the ancient Egyptians used um, cumin as well. And uh, I read somewhere that they actually used it to um, lighten uh, skin coloring and also in the mummification process, as well as for spicing, spicing up their food. Isn't that? And uh, the Greeks and Romans used it. And uh, in Morocco, even today, they have a plate of cumin at the dinner table. Really? So I, I don't know if it's like an appetizer or you just sprinkle it on your food. I'm not really sure. That's great. I mean, yeah, it's what, such good flavor. Yeah. I mean, but the mummification. Okay. I know. I know. That's, I kind of blew my mind a little bit. Yeah, that's, <laughs> it's interesting how many things they use this for. I, I think it has such a rich aroma that they probably like season things, even for like their paints and their mummies. Yeah. And right. Other things that they do. So we're gonna. So you can cover that. We're okay. gonna let it let it cook for so a little bit. So we're gonna let this kind of warm yes, up because you want the spinach to to cook in a little. Okay. And oh, it's just gonna like a medium. Right. And it's gonna thicken up a bit. Um, you can also add a little extra water if it gets too thick. That's, yeah. And, okay. and just to make sure the spinach is cooked. You don't okay. want to eat raw spinach. So. No, absolutely not. So at the very end, um, we're going to throw in the cilantro. Okay. And I know you like cilantro, Katie. I do. A little you secret mean. about you. <laughs> it's just so good. I love it. So and, fresh. Uh, and uh, the turmeric, um, I usually put in the turmeric at the very end as the food is cooling down. Okay. And the and, reason for that is right. because you want to release the antioxidant properties of turmeric, and you don't ever want to burn your turmeric. Okay. And I know a lot of people who will put it in along with the onions and the other spices, mm -hmm. but it, you have to be really careful because it will burn. It does, okay. And it, and it changes the entire aroma and taste of it. Okay. So, and I think you also lose some of the health benefits when you do that, personally. So, I, I read a lot of Ayurvedic literature, and yeah. they talk a lot about um, the antioxidant properties of turmeric. Okay. I think Dr. Oz recently had a show about it as well. Oh, well, so, Dr. Oz is well, Dr. Oz says it. <laughs> I mean. So, it but, must be. but it's really it's supposed to be good for you and yeah. um, people um, um, in uh, in the South Asian region believe that if you eat it um, from the time you're a child, it builds up certain antioxidant properties in your body as you grow. So everyone so. go out, get yourself some <laughs> today, and don't stain your clothes. Right, and don't stain your clothes. Now, real quick, while this is heating right. up too, you know, um, you also have a show here on the you know, on the Wellesley channel. I do. So, and it's, what's the name of it? Chatting it's called it Chatting It Up with me. With you? Yes. With <laughs> Rama. And so, when can we, how can the people at home view that? So, I uh, usually um, it's it's uh, on air. It's, you just mm -hmm. turn on the TV and you look for it and you can also go online. Okay, so the Wellesley right. channel and then online. And they have a great, they have a great uh, website and web link and yep. you can go on there and just put my name in or. Exactly. Type in, type in cooks in town, right right. and you, it comes up, oh, and you can watch great. it. And how long have you been doing that for? Um, so I think we're on year two now. Wow, yeah, that's fun. How exciting! So yeah. if you know anyone at home is ever looking to get on, you know, just contact the Wellesley Channel or right. Um, right. You know, get on the show. and it's about local women. Correct. Yes, and it, it's, it supports and promotes um, women, yeah. um, and, um, but it's about local um, people who have uh, come into town or have ties to Wellesley, yeah. or in and out. Oh, it's, it, there's a variety. There's a variety on the show. And so. I think I'm actually, I'll be on. I hope so. I yeah. hope you're going to be on later this month. I would love that. That's right. We'd like to get the scoop on you. I'm good on as chatting. A, so. As a local Wellesley girl. <laughs> yeah, I know. Gosh, yeah. Who likes to cook. <laughs> That's true. So I think this is this is at like a nice simmer at this point. Good. So you think we're good to just kind of move forward? I think, I think forward? yeah, if you want to, if you want to uh, 
gander a taste and see how it's doing. Make Tennessee sure that spinach here. is cooked. Yeah. I'm going to leave it to your culinary expertise. Oh, thank you, yes. All right. And it's also thickened up because some of the moisture has, you know, gone away out of the soup. This will help it. It is. But by now you're a professional food taster, so. That's so good. It's so good. Way to take something like a canned soup and right. just kick it and, off. And you can see that yeah. it's it's almost become something different. It's like a different It recipe. really has. Wow, that's amazing. So what should I do now? Should we turn the heat down? Maybe okay. a little bit of salt. Um, sure. Not much, but. Feel free to put a little okay. salt in there. And then I'm going to put just a little bit of turmeric. Okay. So it takes about a, a, a was it a, not even a half teaspoon, like a yeah. fourth of a teaspoon maybe? Okay. And, and that's little goes good in. enough. What's great about everything that we just use is such a little goes right. a long way. And I, sometimes I also use a little bit of cinnamon. Oh, fun. And you can, you can have the sticks and you can grind them in the grinder. Yeah. Or um, this is pretty pure. I like this particular one because it doesn't have um, additives. Okay. Right? So I just do a little bit, just a dab, just a just, little. Yeah. So it's just a sprinkle. Perfect. So you don't need a lot. Um, these things all work synergistically to bring out and complement um, each other's flavor. Just mix so, that in. Get that yep, going. Just mix it in. Okay. And, and then, then are we going to add the cilantro while it's on the heat? You can. Okay. You can, and you can also save a little to garnish at the very end when oh, you're serving. Love a good garnish. So. All right, so let's put some of that in. And that brings out a, it gives, gives it a little a bit of a lemony flavor, mm -hmm. and it also complements the spinach. Yeah, for sure. So it gives it a little bit more hardiness. So we'll just get this all well mixed. And uh, we also have uh, curry leaves that we use and bay leaves. Okay. So those are, un and cilantro, they're all different garnishes and you can use them um, in the actual stew or for separate plating. Right. And the, and the next time I'm in, I'll bring in curry leaves and I'll, I'll, let, you, I'll let you have a feel, feel for that because yeah. that has a very distinct aroma. Well, I'm definitely going to check out that market in Waltham. Yeah, there's one in about. Waltham, right on Moody Street. There's an Indian store, and there's also mm -hmm. one up on uh, in Trolley Square in Framingham, which is a really nice one. They have really fresh um, stuff, ingredients. Yeah, so just, you know, get out yeah. there and just kind of, what's so important, what's so cool about this food is get out there, try different things, start with a small amount of it, because a little, like you said, goes a long way. Right. Just find what works for your flavor right. palette. Exactly. But just... Oh, you know, by trying, you're, you're Indianizing your food, you know? Okay, so I think we're going to take this off the heat. Yeah, I think it's, I think you're set. You're okay, done. Okay, awesome. And that was so quick. That was too. really fast, yeah. So, and then I just got these adorable little, I like to add these to my <laughs> pantry, from um, Green's Houseware here in Wellesley, right on Washington Street. We'll just kind of fill these up, I guess. And this, this is good. It makes um, a good size serving for anywhere from one to three people. And it's hearty because so, of the lentil. It is. So, right. You know, it's... Keeps you filled up and yeah. warm. Those are cute. Are they adorable? Yeah. Ten bucks. I feel like you want to take them out to the porch and <laughs> enjoy your soup. Alright. Perfect. Lovely. So you can probably get what we just did. Probably could have probably turned that into about three yeah. or four servings. And, and you can also do other stuff with it. You can um, add some diced chicken. Oh yeah. And in the time that it takes the onions and tomatoes to cook um, in the soup, uh, in the stew, it'll it'll cook your chicken as well. Oh perfect. And if you if you dice it small, it'll you'll get an even cook. You don't have to check on whether your your chicken is cooked or not. So you can actually throw extra stuff in there as well. And sometimes I've, I've um, changed things around. Instead of spinach, I'll use zucchini. Yeah. But the zucchini you want to throw in um, about five, six minutes before you turn off the Break stove. Break it down. Because it'll, it'll really, it'll puree. It'll yeah. mush down if Get you mushy. don't. Right. And I, I do. I like my vegetables to have some texture. Yeah. I want to know that they're there, not but the flavor, but I want that crunch. Right. Yeah. Well, this has Sounds been great. a blast. Thank you so much. I'm so excited thank to do you. this again. Perfect. Um, but in the meantime, thank you all so much for tuning in. Uh, check out the new episode of Cooks in Town, as well as chatting it up with Rama here. And um, keep an eye out for more Indianized food here well, on Cooks in Town. We'll be back. Awesome. Okay, sweet. Thanks, guys.